Okay, so we will try to finish the simulation for today. And well, this is the system. Last class, we finished the power flow algorithm to obtain the voltages. We need the voltages because that's how we are going to connect each of the machine with the rest of the system. So how do we get the voltages is going to be through the power flow. The power flow equation will connect all the components in the grid. So that's what we did last time. We have the equation. Any questions so far with the power flow? No? Um, so I, I already uh, put the file for you in Canvas. This is what we worked on last class. And I modify a few things, not many, uh, but I create a function to obtain the admittance matrix. So the same equation we, we used last time, but I put them right here at the bottom as a function, so it's easier to read the code we are creating. The same thing with the data. The data, I think that we already created this function before for the data. So with that little modification, then we're going to have the flat start for the voltages. We have the Y bus. We estimated the reactive power from the generator two and three, and we calculate the delta power, and with that, the maximum absolute value of delta power for P or Q will define the error. So we repeat this until we meet the tolerance, and we will apply the recursive equation over and over until we meet that tolerance. When we are done, then we are here at this line, and we obtain the voltages at the basis V2, V3, V4. At the same time, because we're using the Gauss equation, we obtain the vector of injected current. So at the same time here, we can store what is the current being injected to generator two and three. Now we have what we were looking for. We were looking for the voltage and current injected in this point. Why? Because that's how we're going to initialize the model. So this is the circuit we will use. If we know this voltage and we know this current, we can repeat this process from step one to step six to initialize all the variables for our system. Our machine is modeled with four differential equations and two algebraic equations. So we have four state variables. EQ prime, EV prime, delta omega, and we have two algebraic variables, IQ and AV. So with this model, we will determine, given this voltage and covering, we will determine these six variables for each machine. So we need to apply this process. We already went through that in the single machine infinite bus system. The only difference now, we need to repeat this process twice. We have V2 and I2, we will initialize the machine two. And then we have V3, I3, we will repeat the process for machine three. And that's what I have, I don't have it here, but for the sake of time, I also upload to Canvas the complete code for this part. So we can focus hopefully in the short circuit today in the whiteboard. So the code is going to be here. Let me go all the way up. So now I am going to uncomment this line. So we are going to create a function and the output we will get is the time and the matrix of variable C. Uh, in this code, because we don't want to calculate the white bus over and over again, we can calculate it one time and we define it as a global variable so we can have access to the data from anywhere. The same thing for EFV2 for machine two and machine three. When we calculate this at the initialization, these need to remain fixed. That will be defining the level of excitation in the machine. That will define the terminal voltage that we will have in the machine. So these value ones they are calculated, they need to be 
be fixed and we need to access this from anywhere. That's why we are defining these as global variables. Uh, another modification, I have the another function here for data operation. What I have included here, I included the voltages specified at the slide bus in the machines, the power of the machine, and the power consuming bus four. We can tweak this, we can change and analyze how the system would behave if we have other power flows in the system. So we will define these in this function. We use this for the Gauss cycle. So we need to make the changes uh, in the algorithm that we created to, to use those values. So for example, here, the, the power generated in generator two is PG2. Um, and we're going to use that as P2 specified. That's what we were using for the power, uh, power flow. Yeah. Um, so everything is the same. I just included that additional function. And up to this point, then we should have voltages solution and current injected in the two buses related to the generator. Now we do the initialization. So for machine two, what do we need? First of all, we need the data. So we are going to create a function data is G2, which is at the bottom of this code that will store all their relevant, uh, relevant parameters for this machine. The reactances, the time constant, and the inertia. So, um, when we read the data, then we are going to do the initialization. And we did this for the single machine infinite bus system, um, but we are going to repeat it here for this case. Uh, the, the step, remember, step one all the way to step six, we are looking for that complex voltage behind the quadrature reactants. The angle of that complex, complex voltage will be angle delta. So that's what we are doing here. E2 is the complex voltage behind the quadrature reactor. And the angle of this is delta for machine two, delta two. With that delta, then we determine the currents in that machine. Current that are, are being injected somehow to bus two. And we have the, the, the expression for that. And we can solve for IQ two and IV two. Using this in a complex voltage behind the quadrature reactants, then we have an expression for EFV2. We calculate EF2, e EFV2, and we're going to keep it fixed, and that is defined as a global variable. And then we use the differential equation for EQ prime and EV prime and solve for those two variables. That's the equation. When we set the derivative of the angle to zero, we obtain that omega two is one per unit. So it's exactly the same procedure. What is the difference with what we did before? The difference is V2 and I2. We have to calculate this from the power flow. You change the loading condition, these are going to be different numbers and the initialization will give you a different set of values. What we're going to do for the generator three, exactly the same. The data is different, E3 and A3, but it, it is the same procedure. Here are the equation again. We need to create a, another function for the data for the generator and exactly the same equation. Yes, these are for generator three. Any questions so far? Now we have the initialization of all the variables in the system. We have a state variables and algebraic variables for each machine. Tell me here, what are the state variables for machine two? EQ prime, EV prime. We're missing two state variables. We use them at the classical model, delta, delta and omega. EQ prime, EV prime, delta, and omega, four state variables, and two algebraic variables. 
IQ and ID. So we have four state variables, two algebraic variables. For the generator three, another four state variables and two algebraic variables. What else do we need? The grid. How is represented the grid? Through algebraic equation. How many variables do we have for the grid? It's a four bus system. One bus is, is the infinite bus. So we have three complex voltages. So six. six. Which are those? Yes. An angle too. Uh, the, here is an observation, you know, uh, for the power flow, we are calculating these in a steady state. There is no dynamic behavior, um, dynamic response. So in the power flow, um, we assume that the terminal voltage will be the specified because there is a controller. But when you have a disturbance in the system and you have a dynamic evolution, that voltage will not remain at specified value. You will have some dynamic interaction and that voltage will change. So we need to determine that voltage. And that's why we need the equation from the grid. So for dynamic simulation, even though we're going to have a PV bus for machine two and three, those voltages need to be determined in magnitude and angle for dynamic simulation. Okay, how many variables again? Six generator one, six generator two. We have 12 and six for the grid, 18. So when we write down our equation, what we need to do, we need to define what is the order for the equation. And I already wrote this in the whiteboard. For the state variable, that is, we don't have any choice. You, you will have a set of differential equations already for your system. And the order, we, let's pick the same order, how we presented the model. And the order is EQ prime, EV prime, delta and omega. So the state variables are going to be first for the machine two, you have those differential equations for the machine two. And following the same order, you, you will have four more differential equations for machine three. So these are the differential equations. So because of we have differential terms, uh, the definition of variable is going to be straightforward. This is a differential equation of EQ prime, EQ two prime, then that's going to be the variables that we will assign to our vector of variables Z. So this is going to be the first differential equation. This is the last differential equation, eight and we will define the variable with the same order. So we have EQ prime, and for the last one, we will have omega three. Yeah, is that clear? Now, we have 10 other algebraic equations. And as I discussed before, it doesn't matter what we're going to pick or define. We need to assign a variable to each equation. And, and here, it doesn't matter what we're going to use. But when we define an order, we need to stick with that order, yeah? And we pick this order before. What was the order? We pick first because the machine one will have two algebraic variables related to the electrical circuit of the machine. And the order we pick is IQ and IB. So what we're going to do here, because we started with machine two and then three, we're going to use two equations, algebraic equation for machine two, and two equation for uh, algebraic equation of machine three. Which order? The one that we used before, IQ and IV for machine two. So this is going to be in the ninth and 10th position of that vector. And then IQ and IV for machine three, yeah? And the last one, this might be strange to you, but we have just, six unknown voltage magnitude for bus two, three, and four in angle, but voltage angle for bus two, three, and four, six unknown. And we have uh, three complex equations. So what we, we have to do here, uh, we will pick, we, we, we have this representation. 
this representation for the grid uh, is going to be a vector of four voltages and a vector of four current injected, right? And the balance equation for that is that the current must be equal to the y value multiplied by the voltage, right? But here, we're not going to use the slack bus or the infinite bus because that's fixed, the voltage is fixed. So basically, I didn't put it here for simplicity, but here, we're going to pick the equation related to bus two, three, and four. So this is actually a reduced uh, representation and we're going to pick just the equation, the balance equation for bus two, three, and four. Yeah. Um, so because we have complex equation, a simple way to obtain six equation is by taking the real part of this and the imaginary part because this is an algebraic equation that must be equal to zero, I am just sending the vector i to the other side of the equation. That's all. Yeah? Are you with me? So, so we're collecting the slack bus voltage angle in the equations? We need to calculate this. Let's, let's go one more time over this. We need to calculate this, and we did it before for the, for the power flow. Um, and you have Y bus, and you have all the voltages. We call this I vector in our code. So basically here, we're going to pick only the second, third, and fourth row of this equation. And those are going to be complex. These three, Equation three rows we take from there. We're going to take the real part and then we're going to take the minority. There is something we need to do. We are not done with this part. We, we have just discussed what is the order, but um, there is something we need to do. This part right here represents what exactly in our model. This part right here represents the current flow we will have where exactly? In the grid. Currents that will flow through lines and transformers. And what we're going to have right there, what kind of current is that? Ryan? Uh, that is the current, uh, wait. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, repeat. So this, expression that we have here, we did it at, at, at the beginning when we review the y bus matrix. This expression right here basically will determine the currents that will flow through lines and transformers. Um, let's let's speak the first row here is y11 one, one multiplied by b1 plus y12 multiplied by b2 all the way to the last term, right? So those, those are currents. But current where those are related to the current that will flow from that bus one through the grid. That bus one might have two lines. Well, so this first three. equation will be the sum of all those currents that leave that bus and go to the grid. Yeah. So then I, that I is like two loads and from sources. There you go. Yeah. So for here, here we need to do something else. We have bus one is this like bus, infinite bus. We will not deal with that. But bus two will be what? A generator. So here, for, 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 the, for the first equation here, we need to pick what is the equation that will come out, out, out of the generator. And we do have a model for that. So this part needs to be a model with the model that we have for the machine. What is that current? behind the reactants minus the terminal voltage divided by the reactants? Yeah, but, but we, we actually have already currents de defined for the generator, right? So we have this, but we have a model for that. And we're going to include that in our 
equation. So what is that? Uh, that the current that is going to be injected from generator two is what? This one. So we have this term IQ for generator two and IV for generator two and delta two. That is the current that needs to be included for bus two right here. The second equation is the current injected in bus three. What do we have? Exactly the same thing. We will have IQ three, IV three, delta three. We have another expression for this term. What about the last one? We have a load. So what is the, the current injected in that load? We have bus four here. We have two lines that go to bus two and bus three, but here you have a load. So what is the current now going backward injected here at bus four? It's going to be the power, complex power injected. And that is what? Minus PL minus QL conjugate divided by voltage D4 conjugate. That's expression for the current I4, okay? Um, we can do this immediately right here. Uh, so B4, where we can, this is a phasor. So for B4, let me, let me stop this. Yeah, for B4, we have a B4 magnitude and an angle theta four, okay? So when you have B4 conjugate, you have B4 exponential of negative J theta four, but that is in the denominator. If we take the angle and put it in the numerator, what do we have? Let's put it right here. This is B4 exponential of J theta four negative because it's a conjugate. But if I send this term to the numerator, then this become plus, right? So I4 will be, um, one term will be negative PL B4. Um, and the other is going to be plus J Q L B4, all of these multiply by exponential of J theta four. And that is cosine of theta four plus J sine of theta four, okay? So that's the injected power. Why do I need to express this in this fashion? Because as you can see here, for one equation, we need to take the real part of this. And for the other, we will take the imaginary part. That's a current inject. What about if you have something else, whatever it is? The same procedure. You need to know what is the model of the component you have connected and derive what is the current injected at that pass. Is that clear? So now that we define the order, we have the initial condition. Just to avoid confusion, I, I put the text of what is the order in this code. Okay, exactly what I have in the whiteboard. So as we calculated all the variables, the initial condition will be for the variables that we calculated and we will fill this vector. Then we define the, the parameters for the solver. The, we need to include the mass matrix because this is a set of differential algebraic equations. We have only eight state variables. So the first eight diagonal term need to be one. That's what we're doing. We will tell the solver we're using a mass matrix and the name of that matrix is M and the max step is 10 milliseconds. We will simulate for 10 seconds and we will invoke the solver 
And the function we will use for that is h. So that, what is the last part we need to do? Well, the function. Um, and that's the function that I created already for this system. We remember that we're using three global variables, y bus, EFD2, and EFD3 that will remain fixed during the simulation. The nominal speed, we're in the United States, so the frequency is 60 hertz. The angular speed is that bad, about 377 radians per second. And then, because we need to fill all the equations that we have, we need to load because the, the solver will invoke this function many times and the variables will change as we move in time. Then we need to read what is the variables that we will have at a specific time. So we will pick the vector Z and with the same order we defined before, we will read the variables, okay? So what I did here, we're going to do it uh, step by step, and we will pick the first generator first. So we, we, we take the variables for the first generator. We have here four state variable. We will read them. We know what is the position in the vector Z for those state variables. We have two algebraic variables for the machine. We know the position already. And also we need the voltage at the terminal of the machine. And that comes from the grid. So based on the order, we need the voltage two and angle theta two that are in this position in the vectors. So here, up to here, we will have all the variables we need. Then we're going to load the data again for the generator. And we will fill the equation in the same way that we did it before. So the first four equation, this is exactly what we use in the single machine infinite bus system. Uh, the data is different, but uh, same expression for the function. This is going to be the algebraic equation for the machine. And we didn't use this before. Why not? Because we didn't have to have a power flow equation. It was just one to one bus. We skip the terminal voltage you know, because we have a generator connected with a line to an infinite bus. We went straight to the infinite bus. So we, we wrote the equation in that fashion. It was simple. But here, we cannot do that. We need to formulate the equation up to the terminal voltage. Yeah? So the equation, uh, we can derive the equation, uh, but um, I think that that's something simple that can be done. You look at this set of equation and you will have a Kirchhoff voltage law here. And, and um, Kirchhoff voltage law. So the voltage at the terminal plus the voltage drop here, we don't have a resistance in our data. So the voltage of the terminal plus the voltage drop in this impedance that must be equal to this internal voltage. So you have a complex equation there. What can we do to simplify the equation? We're going to multiply that equation by exponential of negative J delta, right? Why? Because that term will be canceled here, will be canceled in the current, and the voltage will be now, we are going to be, be subtracting delta from that voltage. Do you understand what I said? I can write it down on the other side. So we have here a voltage. This voltage is what? And then we have the impedance, which is X, jx d prime we have a current here which is iq minus i minus j i v multiplied by exponential of j delta and here we have the terminal voltage what is the terminal voltage for for this case this is the the 
generator two. So this is voltage V2. This is V2 exponential of J theta two. So this equation for the internal voltage is E Q prime. E Q prime minus J E D prime minus J times the quantity X Q prime minus X D prime by Q. Um, and then the whole thing by E to the J delta. Now, so I will write on the equation again. That's the equation. So how we can simplify the equation? We multiply everything um, by exponential of negative j delta two. This is two, two. These are all two. Yeah. If we do that, when do we do the multiplication, this term gets canceled. This term gets canceled, and this voltage will absorb that angle. So we have EQ2 prime minus J EV2 prime negative J EQ2 prime XD2 prime IQ, nothing else, because this will get canceled with that term. On this side, XD2 XD two prime multiplied by the this part of the current, the angle get canceled, and then you have V2 exponential of J theta two minus delta two. Yeah, and now we take the real part of this. So if we take the real part, we're going to send this to the other side of the equation. So it will be negative EQ two prime and that's it. Huh? And here we will have negative J squared, that is plus XD2 prime IV2 plus V2 cosine of theta 2 minus delta 2. And then we we'll take the imaginary part of this. This on the other side is positive. And these are, um, you will have, this term is going to be repeated here. Can you see that? This term, this become positive. So this term is repeated, so it will get canceled. So basically we will have this, this on the other side, which is XQ2 prime multiplied by IQ2 plus the imaginary part of this. So for the generator two, these are going to be the equation now, algebraic right equation. A little bit different, why? Because we are, we are assuming that the equation is formulated up to the terminal voltage. Let's go back to the code here. That's the equation. It's the same equation we got there. It should be. I think we're fine, right? Yeah. yeah. So we have a modified algebraic equation for that generator because now the equation is formulated from the internal voltage all the way to the terminal voltage of that machine. For generator three, same procedure. The variables are different and they are located in different parts of the vector C. That's why the ordering we have is important. We call the corresponding position of the vector and we load all the variables again. We load the data for the generator and we write down the equation again. Four differential equations for the state variable two algebraic equation, similar equation, but the values are different. Now these are current in generator three and the terminal voltage is V3 
and theta three uh, magnitude in angle. Finally, what we have in the whiteboard, we have we have we have loaded voltage two angle in magnitude and voltage three angle in magnitude. Now we miss that for bus four. We have a load here. So for this part, we need to go to the vector and get the two variables, load that. Then we proceed as we discussed here. We need to create the B vector. And with that, we calculate the I vector. These are all numerical evaluation. We don't need a explicit expression, all complex numbers. But what is the tricky part is the component that I ex explain here. This vector i. Why does b vector come from the grid? In vector i come from the component we have connected. So here we need to make the distinction. What is the first component? It is the generator bus two, where we have generator two. So we take the real part of the current injected by generator two and replace it there. The, the negative as, as I have it here. Yeah. And that comes from the model, right? Is that familiar? Do, do you understand that? Yes. So the, the, the equation is IQ minus JID multiplied by exponential J delta. So you have two terms that will show up in the real part. David? I was going to say, just when you're like done, could you also add like a comment uh, pointing it out so we don't forget? Like a yes. There was a glitch in the recording, so I will explain what we were discussing here again. We were talking about the two equations we get for the injected current to a bus from a component. We discussed these for the generators connected at bus two and three. We have a model for the currents that come out of the generator and we take the real part and the imaginary part, and that's how we get the terms we will use for the two real equation we will use for those injections. At bus four, however, we have a load. So in this case, we need to use the model we have for the load. So far, we have assumed that the loads are described as constant power load. So in this case, what we have uh, here is power PL plus JQL. With that power, we obtain the injected power, which is the negative of the consumed power. And with S4, we obtain the injected current at bus four. As you can see here is if B4 phasor is B4 magnitude, exponential of j theta four, b4 conjugate is going to be the similar expression, but with an angle, a negative angle. And this is what we have here. If we move this term from the denominator to the numerator, then the sine of the angle will change to positive, as you can see here. Um, as we have used in many occasions, this term, is equal to cosine of theta four plus j sine of theta four. And you have the product here of two complex terms. Therefore, you will have two terms that are real and two terms that are imaginary. So by taking the real part of I four, we obtain this expression. And by taking the imaginary part of I4, we take this other expression that are going to be used in the two real equations we obtain for the current injected at bus four. Yeah. And with that, we should be done. We calculated the initial point, the, the steady state point. So if we invoke the solver, get a solution. What do you think we're going to get? Steady state values, right? We run this 
and we did it. We have the initialization. A lot of work for this, but uh, now we did it. Uh, when you deal with large scale system, then you try to make everything automatic. You try to work with matrices and we have procedures that we're not going to review in this class. The complexity will be up to this point. From now on, what we're going to do, we're going to use the classical model to make the formulation of the problem simpler. Do you like that? Should we do that? <laughs> it's still like simple. The main difference with the classical model, I guess, is that we don't consider the. Let, let, let's, let, me, consider let me change the, the, the screen now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I was just going to say, I guess the main difference with the classical model versus the, we don't have the DQ axis. So we're assuming that the voltage in the, the rotor is not dependent on the rotor position. It, it just stays. The magnitude is going to be fixed. Yeah. Um, but let's look at the variables here. Here we have four variables, state variables, and two algebraic variables. If we, we use classical model, what do we have? All our EDE and EQs go away. One way, we have delta and omega. That's it. Do you need this ID and IQ somehow? No. The only moment you're not going to need a current, we don't need this equation. But the only moment you need a current is going to be here. But that current can be expressed in terms of that internal voltage, external voltage from the grid divided by the impedance. So these expression we have for the current injected from the generators need to be changed in the classical model. But we're going to get rid of a four equation. Instead of six equation, we will have just two for each machine. You like it simple? That's going to be simple. Now we're going to be focusing on the grid because we're not done. We're done with, with the simulation, but there is one part we need to change. What is that? Disturbance, how we consider disturbance. Uh, for the purpose of simulation here, um, let's see what we get if we... You have to reshare the screen. Oh, thank you. We are done with code. The only thing that we need is short circuit. Uh, but for the purpose of the simulation, let's say that we change this to zero five percent, and we simulate and see what happens. And yes, uh, that's what we expect. And the system just reach stability. I don't know, maybe fifteen seconds. Uh, we can simulate this longer. But uh, this is exactly what we we want. The, the, the thing is not realistic here because we need the disturbance typically is going to be a short circuit or another disturbance, realistic disturbance in the system. So that's the last part we need to discuss. As we are almost done with the time, I will leave that discussion for next class on Monday. We will talk about the short circuit. But uh, that's just a circuit. Basically, we need to look at the grid and impose short circuit conditions. One simple way to do it would be, let's have a different circuit for the short circuit. If we have a short circuit in generator two, that bus two is going to be the neutral point now. So all impedances will change, the Y bus will change, and then we can obtain just a Y bus for that condition. How we're going to do it in, 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 in for other studies, more systematic studies. We try to derive the Y bus or in the short circuit from the original Y bus by using, using transformation. But we're not going to get into that for simplicity. We wanna focus on the analysis of the system rather than the procedure. But uh, this was the most difficult part so far. I think that from now on, it's not going to get more difficult than this, because we're going to use the classical model and we're going to focus on the grid and the disturbance on uh, Monday. Yeah? Okay. A couple of quick questions. So I know this isn't a realistic disturbance, but uh, 
do you know just by having experience with this why which like for example the yellow one had a big uh change where the some of the other colors did it are the other colors associated with like the, the speed like omega of the generators the ones that like don't oscillate very much versus the ones that do oscillate the most like what, what variables are most uh affected by this story? so we can shake each of the variables and, and know for sure, but um, the, the, these, I guess this is a, a related maybe with the EFV, the voltage in the machine, um, and, and, the, and the delta and the speed should be here. They don't change, but these changes in the speed are very significant because they involve a lot of energy. So you see there in the plot, oh, this is insignificant, but it's not. This is the most important part of the dynamic analysis. So uh, we did, we have not reviewed yet the, the short circuit, but during the short circuit, we will experience some discrete changes in the underwrite variable. It would be interesting on Monday to see what are those changes. And it will be easy for us to identify which are those, because you you will see the discrete changes. And second question, I know like another typical disturbance they look at is like, instead of a fault, they say like, oh, generator tripped. Those are big, big so disturbances. Is, is that like, uh, would you model that just by removing that generator and having it as a... We can do that. This system though is, has an infinite bus. And because the system has an infinite bus, the frequency will not deviate. Look at the plot here for the frequency. Go to uh, nominal frequency, right? But in a finite system, when you just have generators with some inertia, if there is a generator trip, you will have a, probably a large amount of power removed from the system. You will have a power imbalance. And frequency will deviate in that system. So the, that will hopefully we can study that disturbance if we remove a generator when we add the governor in the generator. So, like for example, how would if you wanted to just impose a generator trip on this code, what would you do? Would you just because in, in the fault I understand you change the circuit and the fly bus changes, but if you wanted to remove all power from a generator. How would you we disconnect a generator. So basically that will be tricky here because we don't, we don't want to change the size of our vector in equation. So what I would do if I remove generator two, I just, I, I would isolate this equation. I, I, I would say this, this equation to something disconnected from the rest. The variables probably will damp, go down to zero. Okay. Uh, the currents here injected to the grid will be zero, and that should take that into account. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. I will see you on Monday. <laughs>